Hello, this is Harrison from Langchain. Today I want to show off a few of the features that we recently added around dynamic few shot selection. That's part of Langsmith. So to show these off, we've created an example application. Uh, this is Lang Tweet. It will help you write tweets about articles. So we do this often to highlight community content. We see a great article or YouTube video or blog post written by someone in the community and we want to highlight them on a, a weekend usually. And so what we do is we go read the article, write a tweet summarizing why it's interesting um, and, and then schedule it and send it out. So we wanted to help create an agent to do that. So this is a first pass at it. It's a very simple one. You can see that there's two steps. We get the content of the article and then we write the tweet. And so I'm gonna show it in action and then I'll show off how this is using dynamic few shot selection under the hood. So let's say that we have this article. I recently saw this one, simple agentic rag for multi-vector stores with Langchain and Langgraph. I can copy the URL, I can come over here, I can put it in, I can submit it. I now see LangGraph running, we first do some simple scrape to get the website content, and then we write a tweet about it. And so if you notice, this is pretty similar in style to some of the tweets that we do actually write about community content. There's a headline that highlights kind of like what's going on, it's usually pretty similar to the title of the article, there's an emoji that's maybe in line with what it's talking about. Um, and then we highlight a few of the key facts. So here, you know, we highlight what exactly is going on, agents that autonomously choose the right vector store. Um, we highlight the technology. So that's another thing we often do. Uh, what technology are you going to use in this? And then a nice catchphrase at the end about why this is interesting. It's generally pretty kind of like buzzword free and, and, and pretty substantive, we think. So what exactly is going on and how is this using dynamic few shot selection? So let's go over here. This is LangTweet. This is a, a GitHub repo that we just open source. Um, it's pretty simple. And you can see that there's a few key files in it. So first, let's dive into the important package here, LangTweet. We can see that there's two files here. If we check out loading.py, this is a file for loading a bunch of different types of uh, documents. So we can have, we have a YouTube loader, we have a Medium loader. Um, basically load your content here. This can easily be extended to other sources of content if you want more rich information. Then we have the agent here. The agent here is quite simple and you saw this in the in the diagram. There's a get contents node and then there's a write tweet from article node and it just goes pretty linearly. The real magic happens in this write tweet from article node. So you can see the first thing we do is we get similar examples and I'll talk about this more in detail in just a second but at a high level what we're doing is we're passing in the current example and we're getting back a list of similar examples from this data set. And I'll show off this data set and what it is and also how to add to that data set over time. We then construct our prompt. So in our prompt, we have this base prompt. It's, it's pretty bare actually. It's, uh, you know, it's got some basic instructions, but not a ton of detail. It's a relatively simple prompt. And then we list out a bunch of examples. So we take the examples we get back from Langsmith and then put them into the prompt in the form of human message, AI message, human message, AI message. And then finally, we add our new content that we just got um, as a new human message. And so then the idea is that the LLM will see these sequences of examples that we think are good examples of how it should behave, and it will generate its message according to those examples. And so then we call OpenAI and we get back a response and we return that. So, all right, what exactly is going on inside this similar examples endpoint? It's quite simple. So we have this data set here, and I'll talk a little bit later on about how we can add to this data set, but let's assume we have this data set of examples. If we click into it, we can see that we have examples of inputs and outputs. The input is a content blob, the output is a tweet. We've added this new functionality called Fusot Search. And so if we go in here, we can see a nice little UI for testing it out. And so this is primarily API based, but we added this nice playground so you can see what's going on. So let's now say something like SQL agent multi-agent. This, this is a very simple string. This is mimicking some content that's about SQL agents. If we search, we can see that we get back a list of examples. Um, and so we can see that there are a few that have a non-zero score. And we can see the first one is about kind of like text to SQL as a coding challenge. We can see the next one's about multi-agent systems. Um, and then another one down here, which seems to have a lot, some, it seems to be, yeah, complex rag, some, some agent-based thing. 
So the idea is that you can pass in content and you get back similar examples that we can then use. It's pretty simple. There's, there's not much more to show off other than that. Um, the final thing that I want to show off is just how to use this code. So this is LangGraph Studio. This is a way to depl deploy LangGraph applications. Um, there's also a desktop app. So one of the things that you can do is you can point LangGraph Studio, which is a desktop app, to your code and get this nice diagram locally and interact with it locally as well. So this is all running locally on my desktop. After I've done that, I can also create a better facing UI for it. So this is, uh, you know, this is a fine UI. You can play around with it, but you might often want to make a more dedicated UI for your use case. So I did that with Streamlit here. If we go back to the code, we can see that we have this app.py. This is a streamlet file. It connects to kind of like my local host. Um, so I'm gonna need to update that code. So let me go here. Let me grab this new local host URL. Let me then go into my streamlet file. I can open up this app.py. I can change this URL here. I can also connect it to the deployed version that I have, but I'll do this for now. After I do this, I then want to run this Streamlit app. So let me go here. Let me do, can't see my code, but let's uh, let's do Streamlit run app.py. Um, now we can do the same exercise we did before. Let me take this URL. Let me put it in here. I'll get back a response after it runs. The main thing that we've added and why this UI is useful is we've added this way to give feedback. So under the hood, what this button is doing, we can see that when we call this, uh, uh, this button that says give feedback, what it does is it calls this API and it creates a new example. So it takes the context and it takes the tweet, which we can edit in the Streamlit app and it adds it to the data set ID. So now I can really start to get this data flywheel going. So someone who's just using this app, they don't need to know anything about Langsmith. They don't need to know anything about coding. They don't need to know anything about prompt engineering. But by giving feedback and just going through their normal flow, they can actually evolve the application with them. So let's say, uh, let's see, is this a good one? Simple agentic rag for multi vector sh for multi vector stores with LangChain and LangGraph. Dive into agents. So I don't like this. Enhance is a bit of a buzzword, right? Everyone knows. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna remove that um, from choosing the right vector. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, it's a bit short, but let's say I'm happy with this. I'll give feedback um, like this. And what this will do under the hood is it'll just update the data set. So if I now go here to examples, I can see that I added this new row. Um, and this is the example that I just used. Um, and we can see that it comes without that enhance verb that I didn't like, without the sentence that had that. That pretty much wraps up all I wanted to show. This is an example of how to create a simple LangGraph app that uses our new few shot search capabilities, deploy it with LangGraph Studio, and set up a Streamlit application that can help get this data flywheel really turning. Thanks for tuning in.